Welcome to Word Explosion with Rev. Simon Apopo, Head Pastor of Grace Hope's Chapel. Do you need direction in life? Are you yearning for a closer walk with God? Are you desiring to be fruitful? The Word of God provides the answers. Feast on God's Word and let the grace of God envelop you as you listen to this life-changing message. Be blessed. Reaching out to the world with love, treating Christians for Hallelujah. Father, we want to thank you for the power of your love. That is available for every weakness in the house this morning. Thank you for the anointing and the power also of your word. Thank you for another opportunity to share your very words. The words of life, the ancient word with your sons and daughters. Thank you for every man, every woman, the sound of my voice. I pray that none shall walk out like we walked in. For it is simply impossible to have an encounter with you and go back the same. I ask that you have mercy on this clay. And grant me the tongue like a skillful writer. Let me declare the very oracles of God. Let your word come forward with power and clarity and precision. And cause us to be blessed because we came. A deposit that will never leave us. In this life, deposit of your word, your power, and your blessing. We promise to give you praise and thanks when it's all said and done. And the church shall shout a big amen. amen. Shout at me like a thunder. Amen. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I feel an anointing in the house. So strongly, if I'm not careful, I won't preach. Genesis chapter 19, 1 to 10. Follow us carefully and IV if it's possible. Life in a sex mad society. Everybody say life, life. in a sex mad society. All right, let's read Genesis 19, 1 to 10. Quickly. Shall we go? Now the two angels, I want everybody to read with me. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lord was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered, we'll spend the night in the square. But he insisted so strongly, I can't hear you, that they did go with him. And entered his house, prepared a meal for them, baking bread with our yeast, and they ate. I want you to take note of verse 4. If the Bible is yours, you can underline it or highlight it. But they had gone to bed. Before they had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. Check it out. Verse 5. Then they called to Lord, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. Mercy. Lord went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him. And said, no, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Underline that. What a crazy, stupid advice. Let me bring them out to you. Can you imagine Dr. John saying, I have two daughters who are virgins. I'm giving it to you. Do any, what kind of madness is this? Hey, can I preach? <laughs> How many daughters do you have? May the Lord deliver you. <laughs> I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you and you can do what you like with them. Really? But don't do anything to these men for they have come under the protection of my roof. Nine. Nine quickly. Get out of your way. They replied and they said, this fellow came here as an alien and now he wants to play the judge. We will treat you worse than them. And you can underline this phrase too. They kept bringing pressure on Lord and move forward to break down the door. But the men inside, somebody said the men inside, 
reach out and pull Lot back into the house and shut the door. The Lord add his blessing to his word. Amen. Many years ago, I was a literature student in the university. I did English in the university. We read a book that was titled, Our Husband Has Gone Mad Again. <laughs> Our Husband Has Gone Mad Again. Ladies and gentlemen, I have no iota of doubt that our world has gone mad again. We live in a sex-mad society. No doubt. Everything indicates the fact that our world is going crazy with the subject matter of sex. But hear me, it didn't start from our time. It began in the days of Lot. Can you imagine for a moment you get a visitor in your house or in the church or in the city and suddenly both young and old men, not even women, gather from every corner of campus they are gathered. Where is that two young handsome guys that came to your room? Maybe you are in your room, Africa Hall or whatever hall, and you get two nice guys to enter into your room, visiting you, and the whole hall and the whole university community, everybody rises up. Say, bring the men out. We want to sleep with them. They are fine guys. Oh. What a crazy life. Want to sleep with men. And the Bible says both young and old came together. We like those guys. Bring them out quickly. And they were pushing the door. Madness in his high place. And to, to, to add salt to injury or injury to salt, whatever. Lot also comes out. Mr. Lot. Christian brother, Lord comes out and says, it's all right. Don't sleep with the man. I have a better option. I'm giving you my virgin daughters. Oh. Go do anything with them and leave my visitors alone. What a crazy idea. What a crazy thought to even imbibe your daughters who are virgin. You want to give them to men free. Free show. And think about it. Where do they know these men from? Where do they know the men from? Do they know their sexual history? Do they know where they are coming from? You, and you just see them and you like them. And you want to go to bed with them immediately. Ooh. And if that is too far-fetched for you. And looks like these are biblical accounts. It cannot happen in our time. May I suggest you it's happening now. How many of you haven't met a girl? The first day you met the girl, you don't know her from Adam. You're excited and you want to go to bed with her. Oh, am I in church? Oh, is it far-fetched? Don't they call it one night stand? And is it not happening in our time? So can't you see that the world is going mad? And don't you see that it's not just in the days of Lord, but it's happening in our time. One night, you just meet somebody for the first, you don't know her from any way. Say, I want to propose to her, I'll marry her. And no matter the advice that is given, oh, no, I'm not worried, no. No matter what they said, you still want it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a lot to learn from Lord because Lord is like a lot of us Christians. Can I say that again? We have a lot to learn from Brother Lord because he's like a lot of us Christians today. Number one, Lot made a lot of mistakes in life. A lot. Read through the book of Genesis 12, 13, 14, 16, 17. You will see this Christian brother. His life was punctuated with errors and mistakes. Too many to count. 
And before you criticize, Lord, don't you have mistakes in your life? At this stage, 18, 19, 22, can you remember the number of mistakes you have made? Have you made mistakes? Can you remember some of them after school? When you came even this semester, some things you should have done, said, some things you shouldn't have watched and you did. That's a lot for you. A lot of mistakes. But watch it. In the midst of all the mistakes, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord somehow in his goodness and mercy saved the Lord from destruction. And I have come to declare to you, it doesn't matter the mistakes you have made in your life. I see the grace of God pulling you out, bringing you out of that mess. You will not be a casualty. You will not be destroyed in this life. The grace will bring you out. The same grace that brought Lot out, may that grace bring you out in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. The guy's life was punctuated with another. Number two, the guy lived in a sex mad society. And that's the exact society we are living in today. If not worse, for the American president to come out to say that any country that does not subscribe and support homosexuality is going to be sanctioned is a crazy world. The, um, the greatest nation in the world and one of the first laws that a president should give when you come to power and this law is not just for America. He said the whole world. I don't care. I'm not the president. But you better allow this boys, boys thing. Men, men thing. Otherwise, I, I smash your, your aid and support. The world is getting mad. Please. If you want to do that, stay in America and do it. How come now it's, it's, it's like it's, I'm ruling the world and I'm detained. Very soon the Antichrist will come and he will take the pace. These are signs that the end is coming and the world is going to get crazier. Especially with the subject matter of sex. It's going to get crazier. If you go to Miami, there are public places of sex. One day I was on a field in UK praying, Kabalabala with my friend, Pastor Claude, Shabalabala, Yabalaba. We are in the spirit praying. Here was a young boy and a young girl in the corner kissing and doing things. And when I saw them, I was shocked and because they, were, they looked very tender. And I decided to walk past them and, and pray, hoping that. When they see me praying, they will feel guilty and stop. Oh, they couldn't be bothered. I, the more I, I pray, the more they were into it. What a crazy world. In the public place. Yeah, we, are, we are even fortunate here in Ghana. They kiss in buses, in trains. You see them sometimes when they are on the, on the elevator. They call it public display of affection. They are holding each other tight and doing all kinds of in an elevator. No, don't go out in Europe on Friday nights. You won't like what you see. And gradually it's coming down and it's like the whole world is getting crazy. Why is the place so quiet? I stop preaching. Oh, I feel like preaching this morning. Are you ready for this? Yeah. I listened to a young man. Young man, he's not 32. Last week on Standpoint, he said, I have introduced over 200 young men to sodomy and pornography. He said, me. He said, I am the male. I'm the one they, they sleep with. Are you understanding me? I'm the female. But I paid them money and introduced them to sleep with me. He said, I can count over 200 young men. Some didn't want it. I had to convince them, give them money so they will sleep with me. And I introduced you number one, homosexual, number two. He said, I can count over 200. 
And hear me, this thing is coming into the church. And unfortunately, it's becoming normal for people in the church to get pregnant out of wedlock. And it's becoming like fun. Today, you cannot see one young lady and one young girl who have courted for two years, who can look you in the eye and say, Pastor, it's been two years of sanctity. No sex. And we are here at the altar. Bless our marriage. You can't find. Hey. Maybe I can find some here. Put your hands together for them with them. Yeah, we are doing something right. Pastor, you are doing something right. Because this is real. One day, somebody came to and came from honeymoon to, to thank the Lord. All right. And I asked them, listen, normally we ask them, how was the honeymoon? How was the honeymoon? That's one of our culture. How did it go? Then they picked the microphone and they said, for the first time, it felt right. Wow. And, and, and for me, they are even genuine. They say, for the first time, it means that it's been happening, 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 happening. And this is the first time they were free of guilt. Madness. This thing, listen, look, I don't know whether it still happens here, but when we were in the university, male hall, when a lady walks in to a male hall like Katanga those days, I was in a place called Casper, a lady will walk in to visit a guy and suddenly it's like people have gone off their mind. They start screaming, Coco, 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 because they've seen a girl. And I used to wonder, what's wrong with us? Don't you have a sister? Haven't you seen a lady before? Just because you are in a male dominated hall, you see a girl and suddenly your mind is going off. It's a sex man society. Now, unfortunately, the church is not doing any better. We sit in church, but we don't care. No, we do anything and everything. We don't care. Fear of God is thrown over the wind. You can preach anything, you're telling it. Ah. So we don't care. People are becoming casualties day by day. Abortions. So when they get married, they're afraid they can have a child. Because they've done abortion. One, two, three, four. One day, a young lady came to me and said to me, Daddy, do we have people today? She was coming from another church. Listen, another popular church. And she joined our church. And I was teaching like this. The one because he came to me, he said, Daddy, is it, do we have people today who can go out and not have sex? I said, why not? He said, I've never seen one. He said, I've gone to, I have had five, eight relationships. None, none. Not even one spared me. So what you are saying, what you are teaching is far from the reality. That's when I got to know that we are in a sex man society. Look at them. You meet an angel or a visitor. First day, let's sleep with you. What's wrong? Seating it up. One day I was sharing like this. Then a daughter of mine who had been to Malawi came to me. I said, Reverend, did you say there's fornication and adultery in Ghana? I said, yeah. He said, no. No. There's nothing like that in Ghana. Oh, there are holy Christians in Ghana, I'm telling you, Reverend. If you call this one, come to Malawi. Come to Malawi. He said, if you go to Malawi and you want to suspend people for immorality, the whole church will be gone. He said, including the elder and the pastor, everyone will be fired. You will preach to empty chairs. 
He said, in Malawi, it's no more an issue. So we are in church, but anybody can sleep with anybody. Just come to church. Come, come. I said, really? He said, Reverend, Ghanaians are holy. Then he said to me, she said to me, he said, one day I was going for jogging. Going for jogging, 4.30 a.m. And was running, I happened to be running under a tree. And suddenly something jumped down, boom, in front of me. I, I panicked. I, I moved up. Who oh, was this? Lo and behold, it was a guy. I love you, baby. Let's do it. She said she was shocked. Zacchaeus, calm down. For today, I will be in your house. Put your hands together for the Lord. Zacchaeus. He said, Zacchaeus, what are you doing here? He said, baby, I love you. I've been spying you all along in church. This lady was a, a missionary's daughter. And they had gone on missions there. And the pastor of the church's daughter, the missionary's daughter, you church member, you are not afraid. So the lady asked her, where do you know me from? He said, I've been observing. He said, every day when you come and you go on trotting here, I'll be under the tree watching you. Today is my day. I gather confidence. I've come down. I love you, baby. Then she asked him a last question. So when, when do you get up here? He said, 3.30 a.m. every morning I'm here waiting for you. Sex mark society. Sex mark society. Pastor Brian said, now when they are doing it, they even say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Shame. You are not afraid of God too. You are using his name to fool around. So it's not a simple matter, ladies and gentlemen, we are dealing with. And it started in the days of Lord. And that's why I know that the world is coming to a screeching halt. Because just as God destroyed the city of Lord sooner than we can imagine, our world is coming to destruction. Jesus said, just as it happened in the days of Lord, so shall it happen in the days of the Son of Man. It's the same society. So we are reinventing the days of Lord and it's a sign that sooner than we can imagine our world is about to be whipped up. And this thing is becoming a big challenge. And I know why the church will be quiet today but help is on the way. I say help is on the way. Everyone here that has struggled, one way or the pornography, masturbation, whatever, I speak as a servant of the Lord. You are coming out of that bondage by the grace of God. For if the Son shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. Receive release from this bondage. It's a big issue. And the big question I want to answer this morning is that how did the Lord get here? Originally, Lord was not from Sodom. He used to live with an uncle called Abraham. Things were going on great. Started prospering. People are, are okay until they start doing well. People are humble until their church starts growing. Hey, can I preach? Yeah. When a church is not small, they are okay. But when it starts growing, you will see power. People are very submissive to their parents until she comes to first year. No dad, no mom. I'm on my own. And this is what happened to Lot. As long as Lot stood with Abraham and walked with Abraham, he was doing great. Prospering, moving on, serving the Lord until that faithful day she said, he said, I want to pitch my tent near Sodom. Genesis 13, 12. Watch it. That was the beginning of the problems of Lot. All the problems of Lot began when he pitched his tent near Sodom. Genesis 13, 12. Put it there. Let's see. Near Sodom. The question I want to ask you, young man. Young woman, you have just come to school. Where have you pitched your tent? 
this evening, where are you going? And who are you going with? Who do you share your intimate moments with? Who are your friends on Snapchat? While Lot lived among the cities of the plain and pitched his tent near. So notice, he was not in Sodom. He went near. And it starts with going near. Near that gentleman. Near that party. Near that group. That's when it starts. But the time we are aware, now the guy has moved from near Sodom to being inside Sodom. And he has moved from being inside Sodom to be at the gate where the elders sit. Total transformation. He has moved, graduated in evil. See, some of you, when you come to first year, you start pitching your tent. But the time you finish school, you are finished. Because of where you associated yourself with and who you did. And hear me, Sodom was a very colorful, beautiful place to be. Look, behold. It looks so attractive. And watch it. It's the attraction, you know. It's the nice things you see, you know. Oh, that one is for this evening. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Look, when I went to first year, I was going to register my courses. I went to course number one, history. I met a lady. Then I moved to literature. I saw the same lady there. Then I moved to religion. I saw the same lady there. I said, hi. Then she also said, hi. I said, you seem to be doing the same course as I'm doing. So oh, yeah, I saw you there. I said, I said then we can be friends. I said, oh, why not? And she was pretty. Can I, can I confess? Yeah. So I said to her, well, when you get to a place and you're registered, just write my name when I come out. Just sign. I don't have to join the queue. You two, when I get to a, you know, then we just track acquaintance. Then we started going for lectures. Then she, she says, a friend, hello. Then they started ponding. Do they still pond on campus? Oh, those days they used to pond. And they don't pond the ladies. They pond only the guys. So if you are smart, you run to the ladies' ladies' room. So whenever they are coming to pond me, I'll just tell her, I'm coming. And she'll say, oh, come. She'll just hide me in her room. And she'll say, can you, do you like Weetabix? Do you like biscuits? Oh, such a na and me and Weetabix and biscuits. Eish, you have finished me already. Those days, you could see she was that about. Then I, one day I said, don't you cook? He said, no, 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 I don't cook, I don't cook. I, biscuits, drinks, that, 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 that. So really, he said, he said, she could tell, oh, just go to anything you want, eat. I said, oh, what a nice friend I've got. Occasionally she would say, I'm going to call the guys that you are hiding here to come and catch you and pond you. Then she would go out. Then she would come in. They are coming. Then I'll be panicking. You see, she was such a sweet person to flow with. Until I started inviting her to church. Let's go for prayer meeting. No. Let's go for this. No. Can we go to church this Sunday? Oh, you can take the lead. I won't come. I said, hey, where am I? I am near Sodom. The earlier I cut this, the better for my life. I love my soul. I love my life. We can meet. Very soon, she started writing my name on her notebooks. Oh, yeah. She was writing my name on it. Somebody said, have you seen her write your name on your notebook? I said, oh, yeah. Here is the end of this friendship. Because you can pitch your tent in here somewhere. It looks fun. It looks exciting. But it's dangerous. All the problems of Lot began when he, he left Abraham and associated with Sodom. Who are your best friends? Who do you chat with on Snapchat, on Facebook? Who are the people you chat with? And what is the content of the chat? chat? Watch this. 
Lord's life went from top to bottom. But for the grace of God, he would have been finished in fire. While Lot was pitching his tent near Sodom, Abraham was pitching his tent somewhere. Let's look at Genesis 12 8. Ay, 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 ay. Watch this. Quickly. From there, he went on, this is Abraham, toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent with Bethel on the west. This man was pitching his tent near where? Bethel. Where is Bethel? What's the meaning of Bethel? The house of God. Can I talk to you? If you are smart, you will pitch your tent in the right place. The right church, the right teaching, and you be like David and say, All the days of my life, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. And it is at that point that you can also say, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I speak into your life. May goodness and mercy follow you as you stay in God's house, as you pitch your tent here. May you see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Listen, I've been a church boy since 10 years and nothing will let me stop being church, church person. I've been crazy about church all through and I don't miss meetings. I don't miss meetings, my friends. Because I know where to pitch my tent for the grace of God to wrap on me. I was so much committed that my senior brother had to tell my mom that he would fail all his exams. Because all he's doing is church. I said, mark my words. Let's mark the righteous and see the end. But I said, mark the righteous. The end of that man is glorious and peaceful. Are your feet standing in the gates of Jerusalem? Are your feet abiding in God's house or you are pitching your tent somewhere? It's fashionable to come to church on Sunday on campus. Everybody dresses and goes to church so you join. My friend, you've got to go beyond that and it's associate with the people that mean business. Interesting, the moment I disconnected myself from that lady, that's when I met my wife. This God is a good God. How that just missed my way out because of wrong positioning. Wrong positioning. In life. Do you know that when the angels were visiting Sodom, originally there were three. They visited Abraham, three, including the Lord. The moment they moved from Abraham's place and they were going to Sodom, the Lord said, I'm not going. Going back to heaven and for you to watch how that city will be destroyed. I can't enter there. I can't visit that, that place. So by the time we read Genesis 19, they have reduced to two. The Lord was gone. Can I talk to you for a few minutes? How many of you want the Lord to visit you? Don't pitch your tent near Sodom. God will never visit you in Sodom. No, no, no. That's why a lot of Christians, they don't have visitations from the Lord. Because your association, God can't come there. I can't stand this. So I said, guys, two angels, go, go and, and fire them and then finish them. I, I'm not going. When they got to, when they got to Sodom, Lot behaved just like Abraham behaved because he had training. He had had good training from Abraham. But the Lord was gone. The Lord was gone. The Lord was not part. I pray that as you pitch your tent in the right place, may the Lord visit you. I say, may the Lord visit you in the name of Jesus. So ladies and gentlemen, the first fatal error he made, and I'm teaching on this as a series, you've got to get a tape, was pitching your tent in the wrong place. And next time I will show you why pitching your tent in the right place will also elevate you. Who you associate with in life. Is key to your promotion. Lord, like a lot of Christians. Now, not only did he make this mistake, but he did another one. And that's also very common amongst us. That's why I'm going to end my message this morning, verse 9, Genesis 19, 9. Watch this.
Get out of our way, they replied. And they said, this fellow came here as an alien and now he wants to play the judge. We will treat you worse than them. They kept bringing pressure on Lot. Mistake number two is succumbing to pressure. Succumbing to pressure. Most of you, when you come to school, you come under unhealthy pressure. Pressure from friends. Pressure from roommates. Everybody is going out. You too, you have to go out some. Look, your roommates have boyfriends. They have girlfriends. They are taking them on a date. Me too, I need to get some. And this pressure can cause you to make foolish decisions in life. Some of you are the sound of my voice this morning. There's pressure to have sex. If your hormones are giving you pressure to have sex, because your age, you are that stage, and there's pressure on your body, there's pressure from society, and when this pressure keeps mounting, be careful. Everybody is doing it. You don't want to stand out, you don't want to be different. The Bible says, He that believeth shall not make haste. No rush, my friends. Hear me. Most of campus relationships end on rocks. 90% of the people that were in relationship when we were in school, today they are out of those relationships. They, they couldn't marry them. Only 10% of campus relationships end up in marriage. So why are you putting yourself under pressure if nobody has come? Don't be in a haste, my friend. Let those who are grabbing grab. September rush, now it's February rush, whatever. Let them go ahead. Be still and know I am God. Keep your focus. You came to study. You came to serve them. Keep your focus. Those who are married, let them marry. God will remember you. I said God will remember you. And God will restore. Don't succumb to pressure. Look at his succumbing. This was when he said, give my two daughters away. Oh. Foolish Lord, somebody said. The foolish righteous Lord. This was when, because of pressure, he said, take my daughters. And when you're under pressure, you can take, make serious, catastrophic mistakes. And it can cost you the rest of your life. I declare you will not be under pressure by society. May nobody put pressure on you. Be yourself. A certain gentleman has been texting you, waving at you, snapchatting you, visiting you, giving you a gift. It's dangerous. It's pressure. Listen, anytime somebody is forcing you to make a decision, don't make that decision. Don't make it. Relax. Take your time. When I proposed to my wife, he said, I'm praying about it. Two years. Three years. No answer. But somehow, by the grace of God, I, I have some patience. That one God has given to me. I have patience. I don't know whether it's a gift or have lent it because patience is not a gift. But I've learned to be patient. I, I wasn't even bothering her again. One day she came back to me and said, won't you ask me for my answer? That's right. I said, but you said you are praying. Pray. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Where are we running to? We are, we are even in school. Where are we going? Why the rush? If you say yes to me today, what will be the difference? I'll still visit you. Visit me. The same thing. So why do we rush? Pressure. The man was under pressure to the point that he says, take my daughters. And it was a casual statement. Hear me, everybody. Very casual. Take my daughters. And the daughters were in the house and they heard it. So years down, then I watched this. Everybody follow carefully. Don't miss this. Years down the line, the daughters and their father have survived the fire of Sodom. They are staying in a place called Zoa. They are not men around. The daughters remember their father's advice. They said, well, our daddy said, even street men can sleep with us. Now, there are no street men here. 
He's the only one left. We'll give him a drink. You get intoxicated. We'll go into him and have children with him. The, the, the pressure he couldn't succumb to and the decision he made after many years was now coming back at him. You are the target. If we can sleep with street pain, then how much more you are that? You see, any time you succumb to pressure for five minutes, you have the sex for five minutes and it will be finished. But believe me along the line. The two children that came of this incestuous relationship were Moab and Ammon. They were the ones who were the thorn in the flesh of Israel all their lives. They tormented God's people all their lives. And up to now they are tormented. Because of one careless mistake of succumbing into pressure. I've seen young women who have succumbed to a rich man's pressure. And the rest of their life they become slaves. Listen, it is not the fun of five minutes. It's the future implications. Anytime you want to make a wise decision, think long term. This thing that I'm doing today, what will be the replications next five years? next 10 years because you can finish it but after some years if when Amnon raped the sister and threw her out little did he know that in two years time he will pay with his head pay with his head sometimes it looks like fun this evening we are going to talk about love on the snuff chat it just looks like fun it's your head you are looking for. Ah, can I talk to somebody here? The long term. Anytime you think long term, you will not succumb to pressure. You say, it's okay, let me endure this pain for now. It's in the long run. He's going to come hunting at you. When you finish, you want to marry. You come into the place. They point, oh, this lady... When he was in school, all the guys on the line finished their hair. He missed out on good opportunities because of five minutes decision that he didn't think about tomorrow. Pressure. Pressure. I pray that every one of us will think about the future and make wise decisions today. Hear me. Something beautiful happened to Lot. In spite of the mistakes. And that's where I'm ending on this morning. I want you to follow carefully. 19 verse 10. Something beautiful happened. Bible says, watch this. While they were putting pressure on him. Bring the men out. They were shaking the door. Attempting to break the door. Watch this. But the man inside reached out and pulled Lot back into the house and shut the door. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. This morning I've come to pray for somebody here. When the pressure is strong and you're about to fail, you're about to mess yourself up, you're about to make a bad decision, may some angel pull you out. May some grace bring you out. Somehow, May you be delivered from that trap in the name of Jesus Christ. Look, there are some temptations. It will just take the grace of God to pull you out. But I see God pulling you out. I say, I see grace pulling you out. You will not mess yourself. You will not destroy yourself because the eyes of the Lord is upon your life. And if you're already a mess, there's an opportunity to pull you out of that mess today. God has sent me like an angel to pull you out of that mess. Never again will you mess yourself up. But hear me. I remember I had a daughter. She said one day she was about to mess up. She had a tap. Then nobody was there. But she knew the tap was a tap from God. She said it's over. She left. May God help you. When the pressure is too strong for you. May Jehovah help you. I've come to ask for grace for your life. So that you help you. Now watch this. 
He said, the man inside. Somebody say inside. Somebody say inside. Hear me. Sometimes it may not be an angel pulling you back. But there's the Holy Spirit inside of you. The Holy Spirit who helps, who checks, who talks to your conscience, who enables you to say no. I speak to you. When you meet a sex mad person or you're in a society like that and you're about to fall, may the Holy Ghost inside you enable you, strengthen you, empower you, and pull you out of that mess. You will not be a casualty. You will stand in the midst of a sex mad society. God richly bless you. Thank you for listening to Word Explosion with Reverend Simon Ampofo. We believe you've been blessed. You can join the Reverend Simon Ampofo page on Facebook. You can also follow Grace Host Chapel on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'd we'll love to hear from you. It's your season of grace.